Hey, welcome everyone. This is uh, Roger from Roger's Hot Rod Garage. We've got the 26th of January, 2024. My birthday today, so I took a day off of work. And I'm gonna do a project I've been wanting to knock out now for probably the, like the last year and a half, two years. Mainly, the lake style homemade headers on here for this V12. If you don't know the history on this car, you can go to YouTube and you can Google my channel and you can actually find when I built this thing. The motor was actually built back in 2009. When I say built, I basically pulled it out of a 750i BMW out of a junkyard here in Germany, in Mannheim, Germany to be exact. Took off the fuel injection, made a homemade intake manifold, got four Rochester 2Gs from the Turkey Run car show. This is actually from National Carburetor there in Jacksonville. Made the lake headers like I told you about. These are not one, but two six cylinder HEI distributors. This one runs this cam bank. This one runs this cam bank slash this side of the motor. So it absolutely works perfectly fine. And I'll show you that in just a second. What else? This is an all steel 1930 Model A Coupe. Uh, I built this thing 12 years ago. It's been on the road over here for a solid 11 years. We've been all over Europe, the beach races, been up to England with it all over the Netherlands, um, Belgium car shows, been to France a couple of times and literally all over Germany. This thing is rock solid and, and I'm not making this up, I'm getting a solid 25, 26, 27 miles a gallon because when this thing is running about 60, 70 miles an hour, I'm not even hitting 2000 RPM. And the whole car weighs in at 1100 kilos, which if you do the math on that, that's like 2000 pounds or less than 2000 pounds. But look, I'll just give you a quick little rundown right here. I told you about the motor. This thing is a V12, it's absolutely rock solid. It's only five liter, which is like a 305 cubic inch, but still it's a solid motor and runs absolutely flawless. I got my buckets here. I got those from Speedway a long time ago. I just got the little park lights on here. Uh, I got the kit, the disc kits on the front, and this is a Super Bell that I also ordered for Speedway. I made my own lateral bars here go to the front because what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to stop here in the middle. So these are solid stainless steel and I had a company right down the road here actually turn in the threads here and on the other side. And you see on the bottom where I screwed up, I got my math wrong because I'm from North Carolina and I had to extend that out a little bit, but that's a solid weld. Again, car's been hauling on the German Autobahns over here. I think I have one video out there where this thing is, you know, 125, 130 miles an hour plus. Go check it out and I'm actually on Autobahn 45. But look, Two sunroofs, one sunroof here, the original one out of the car, the donor car out of the junkyard. By the way, that BMW out of the junkyard cost me like 200 bucks. 200 euros is like $250. Here's a second sunroof here, and this is just, I sectioned it, and this is my access panel to get to all the electronics, which is not a whole lot of electronics, but like the, the brake booster fill and all that good stuff. But anyway, let me show you quickly the interior on this thing. Lighting should be okay in here. 1948 Buick dashboard. And if you look at the gauges here, if it's not the original gauge, I actually took it and glued a gauge behind it and just super, uh, not super glued it, but uh, used a hot glue gun. And then on the outside of that, I put a JB Weld. So somebody says, well, that's Hillbilly, North Carolina. Don't care. They've been in this car functioning flawlessly for the last 12 years. So there you go. Um, what else we got here? Again, I sectioned this in the middle. This is my air conditioning right here. Well, actually the air conditioning is right here. So it's climate control and here's just the vent. And then all these little gauges look like, checked out the little map light right here that actually works. Lights and so forth and so forth. Um, Triptronic shifting is right down here. This is actually the shifter for the manual mode of it or the low car shifter you put in automatic. This is a ZF Getriebe which is ZF transmission, they put them in Audis, Land Rovers, even some Chevrolet projects. So anyway, check this out. You turn the ignition down here, and then my controller for the transmission kicks up here. You basically have to give it X, Y inputs, throttle, position sensor data, and the, the speed, which is out the back, and it does all the calculations for you. And you can adjust the transmission, adjust the transmission any way you want to. Uh, what else we got here? That's basically it. My stereo system is right here. If you push this button right here, it lights up on the bottom. This is the only thing I can see my stereo with, but I got Bluetooth hooked up in here anyway, hands-free. 
and I won't let that play too long so I don't get a YouTube copyright violation. I'll cut that off. Close that door right here and check this out. This is beautiful about this. It cranks right up without an issue. Thing just purrs along nice and smooth. I guess you could put a quarter or a euro right here. It's absolutely smooth. And then I've got my electric cutouts cut here too. So right now it's in open mode, it's kind of loud. But um, if I put it in quiet mode, I can cruise down the Audubon and carry on a nice conversation. So the project for today is to take these headers off. Should be a simple project. And you can see the little fine cracks I got going on here. Plus the ceramic coating that's been on here for the last 12 years. It's looking kind of faded out. So I got a company that's actually gonna re-ceramic coat these things for a certain amount of money. Not very expensive, it's like $300 for both of them. But let me just take a quick walk around and then close out this video. This video is actually gonna be for you in YouTube land, like maybe 10 minutes, but it's in time reality, it's gonna be probably something like about three weeks. Because I'm gonna take the headers off, have them sandblasted, then I'm gonna have roll on weld and stuff right here. You can see how the rust is in here, the rust and the little cracks and everything. Just gonna clean those up so it's nice and shiny like it is right here. Uh, and then I gotta have them sent off and have them out a, a ceramic coated. But anyway, I, I love this car. It's absolutely reliable. You know, whatever your definition of rat rod is, if you open this up and see an axle, I don't like to see that. I've actually got lots of room up in here. Got this whole area down here. I've got this area up in here. I can put a lawn chair. I can put a cool. I've actually had a tent up in here before. I carry all my spare parts up in here. So it's a functioning rat rod, if that's what you want to call it. Uh, Ford Explore rear end. So my parts are cheap on the brakes. And then this thing absolutely sounds cool or super quiet. Anyway, I'm gonna stop yapping right now. Wish myself a happy birthday. Get those headers off, take them to the, uh, the blasting place and go from there. So again, enjoy the video. And the next time I cut this thing on might be about a week or two from now. Take care, bye-bye. Hey, check this out. I'm on the bottom of the car right now. These are these band clamps, uh, probably Summit Racing, I'm not quite sure. I'm just gonna back these things out of here. These suckers haven't been off of here in 12 years and surprised that it actually is just coming off this easy. Look at that, I'm turning these by hand. Anyway, that's not the goal, is to show you how I'm taking the exhaust system apart, but shows you the bottom of the car here. So these bolts off, pop that open a little bit. I'm doing this with one hand, which is not exactly the right way to do this. But. So check this out. The bottom part of the header is off right now. You can see that. So check this out. This is a 12 millimeter. I've got it ground down on the corner, nice and thin right here. Now, why I actually had to polish that on my polish over there, I have to talk to somebody or maybe a therapist about that, but check this out. Uh, yep, so that one goes on there right now. So now I'll do my little hammer trick. And I don't have to show you guys this. I mean, everybody on, watching this channel knows this. A little bit of penetrating oil, a little bit of heat. This is number 11 of 12. I've got to get off on this side. So tap it with a hammer. There you go. And that wasn't tricked. Look at that. That sucker came right off of there. Do one more turn here. There you go. So only got this one right here remaining and then of 12 bolts are off on this side right here. This one's already loose right here. I just got to take it and turn it. There you go. I just let the sandblasters blow that out of there. Damn, that's in there tight.
it's just my gasket is all it is all right This is a sandblasting place here in uh, in Brukovel, and they're gonna blast this thing for me. Ich will nicht so viel Dreck reinmachen, das ging. Nein, ist okay. Warte mal kurz. No. All right, here we go. industrial sandblasting for you right there absolutely super clean all right outstanding these things are back from the sandblaster i think it only took them like about four days so no big deal uh glass beaded on the outside and then sandblasted on the inside here so i'm just going to clean these things up real quick and then we're going to do some welding right up in here you can't see the cracks there's a little bit on the other side but we're gonna do some tig welding here in a couple minutes all right, hey, we got a Saturday morning here, and I'm not too proud to admit that Roland, my buddy right here, lives the next town over, can actually TIG weld not a little bit better than me, but a whole lot better than me. So he's fixing up these little bitty stress cracks that I had in these lake headers. I've been on here for like 12 years now, and uh, we're shining the flashlight up there, make sure we get it all taken care of, but check this out right here absolutely cool just hitting the areas that had the little cracks in them so area right here these are actually good so we're not going to touch them they're sandblast and going to go off to ceramic coating here in about two days Here, uh, I'm at the uh, in-laws company right here in uh, Limesheim, Germany and so the goal is right here I had some blow-by on these two in the center and when I put my little straight edge up against here you can see it right there it's like a I don't know a half a millimeter and whatever a quarter of a sixteenth of an inch is but anyway the plan is right you see how that was flush right there and this one's got a little bit of gap in there the plan is to take this thing and lay it on this big giant sander that they got in there it's like a I know it's probably like about a yard long and I'm gonna try to just take off a little bit right here just to get it a little bit more in sync with it right here and you can actually run across here and feel the minimal difference on here anyway that's the plan right now all right safety first hey this is a Monday I took a day off right here so check this out now if I lay this flat edge up against here it is better than good so now I don't have any air gaps in between here like I had earlier again what I did here is I took it on a big giant sander and then you can see right here these were the high spots obviously this is still a little bit low right here but I didn't want to you know sand and sand and sand so this one right here you can't feel the difference anymore so there is obviously a little bit of a difference right here. So I guess you would call this decking it, or like if you deck a, uh, a small block Chevy head. This right here took off a lot. So I'll put this back on here. And again, check this out. No space in between here. Come down here and the same thing right here, which was the intent of me doing that. And on the way back, I went ahead and picked up the tires. The Kiefer Clinic mounted those for me. The trim ring is not pushed all the way up against you because I want to actually shine that thing up first. And then, uh, I don't know, put these back on today. I got to order myself some um, 
some gaskets right now, though. They're just the M series M72 BMW V12 headers. I get those online and I'll put those on there. So, anyway, stay tuned. Hey everyone, thanks for making it this far along in the video. Now, we've probably got about 45, maybe 60 days since I started this particular video, which has probably been the longest duration that I think I've ever had, but it was just to show a project from start to finish. So there they are. I know you've already seen those. In the meantime, I've got these gaskets right here. These are actually the primaries that go on the individual runners right here, and then the collectors are down here. You see my little gaskets right here. I'm not gonna recut those. I'm gonna put a little bit of anti-seize in these little threads right here. And these are the band clamps from Summit Racing that basically go way down there. You see one of them down there, clean it up. This one I've actually polished up. Why do I polish up? I have no idea. And then this is what's called Auspuff Montage Pasta. And that's nothing more than a high heat and I tested that last night. See the little white crap on there? That's kind of like, I don't know, ceramic type of gasket flange material. Again, the anti-seize will go on these bolts that literally were in here from that band clamp for the last 12 years, something like that. And then I'll bolt everything back together, bolt it together, Bob's your uncle. And this BMW V12 and the 34 coupe We'll soon be back on the road again. Again, it's been winter time over here, so it's been cold. I traditionally don't drive these things in the winter time, but we got season cranking up right now. Today was actually the first car show in Egelsbach by Frankfurt, but it's been raining all day long, so we didn't go. So anyway, stay tuned, and this video is about to be closed out. A proof positive that everything always doesn't go smooth or as planned. What? I'm having to do here is take off these bottom studs then I can confirm whether these right here on the top are in the right line and what I think happened is when these were in the oven for the ceramic coating this gap right here probably got way too large because you can see right here see where I'm trying to go in right here and right here on this corner I'm probably gonna have to bevel these holes out a little bit or enlarge these holes going this direction not a big deal, just trying to figure it all out right now, but again, what I thought was gonna be the easier side, the passenger side, it's no big deal. I've been playing with this crap now for about 30 minutes, so it's no, really not that bad. I'll get it done tonight, though. All right, now, let's see if this sucker fits again. I just enlarged the holes backwards and forwards just a little bit, and now without beating anything, <laughs> All right, now so check this out, folks. Patience, patience, patience. So, and look, it's up in there flat. I've elongated the holes on the bottom just a little bit, so I'll run the studs back up in here, the ones I just kind of counted here and I pulled them back out. And uh, this side will be free chicken here in a couple of seconds, okay? All right, all the studs are on there. I'm just gonna. Tighten these up and make sure I follow these threads all the way through so that most of the stud is actually in the aluminum head. I'm just watching that right now. That one's good. I got a counter on that one. This one is good. That one is good. And then this one is good. And then this one right here. Uh, that's going to be one that's so tight. See how tight this one is up here in the corner, that one right there? I just gotta take the 12 millimeter and work that one in by hand. It takes forever, but hey, what else I got to lose tonight? Here you go. Looking pretty doggone sharp, if I might say so myself right here. I'll tell you what, man, this is some tight wrenching up on here. It, I got plenty of room, but the primary to the actual bolt connection is super super small okay that should be the last one check that out ain't that some quality work right there for i think that's an old craftsman i'm not quite sure but check this out that is uh, the last one on that side what i'll do is i'll get this thing cranked up once i get the other side done pop the caps in here although i'll probably give you a video of with it with the caps off of it first time i've ever run it that way Again, because right down there, you can't see back there, 
I've got the QTB electric cutouts, but anyway, man, patience is a virtue. You know, I used to always think those old codgers, don't listen to them, but now since I'm one of those old guys, it's just patience. You don't have to listen to this advice, but you know, earlier I was hitting this thing with the tail end of the hammer right here, not to ding it up, but you know, you have to figure out why the hell ain't going on here. It's because these studs right here weren't quite aligned. And that's because when this thing was in the ceramic oven, I'm, I'm thinking that's what it was. It just got a minor, minor little tweak in it. And what you don't want to do, I could have stuck a screwdriver in here and then forced it in here and then ran the stud up in here. But then I've always got tension on this thing right here. So decided not to do that, took my time, ran the studs up in there correctly elongated the holes right there you can see them right there and then called it a day or in this particular called it an evening let me go to the other side and what i thought was going to be the hard side might be the easy side but i'll be with you in a couple minutes all right the goal right here is just to take off those little bitty blue dots right now now i'm not going to try to hold the header hold this and hold the camera the gopro at the same time otherwise we'll have catastrophic failure so i'm just going to basically touch up this is not a whole lot right here All right, check this out. This is the little heat panel that goes between the driver's side exhaust manifold and the oil cooler, the BMW oil cooler. So I love doing stuff like this, polishing it up. Got my polishing block right here, or the paste. Give myself a little light on this sucker. It looks like right now, dull. Far right there, shiny. Love it. All right, that's where that little circle goes right here. Let me show you that a little bit on this angle right here. Goes right there. That's what those little bolt holes are. All right, hey, look. Let me uh, let me deviate from the uh, the build here for real quick. Just a little piece of advice here. If you uh, if you ever want to make sure that your chickens don't get uh, taken out by a fox, a raccoon, bird of prey, or terrorist, get yourself some geese. All right, back to the build over here. Let me lay underneath this sucker and put this band clamp on and I'll be done in a second. All right, check this out. I'm on the other side right here now. So again, nothing special. I got my band clamp laying down here someplace. There it is right there. Just gonna put this on here again. I'll screw it up on the other side, the orientation of the hole. So I want to be able to screw on this side. So I'll put it at this angle right here, pretty simple. I'll throw some of the exhaust paste back on here. And then check this out. This is just something that I like to do. If you notice down here, see this little plate? These are my air conditioning lines. I pressed those myself. And yeah, I do have air conditioning in my little 30 Ford Coupe because I'm a wussy, but check this out. That's where it comes down. And you see how close that is right there? It's actually not touching, but it's doggone close. But look, the next time you're in a junkyard and you see an engine pulled out of a car and you've got all this heat shielding around whatever part of the body on the firewall, it's aluminum. So what I did, I think this one's got Toyota written on it. So this came from a Toyota. Just throw this in the back. I cut myself a piece out right here, cut a couple holes in it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shove that right up in here and just put a tie strap probably a stainless steel tie strap on the bottom of it or tie tie whatever you call it zip tie anyway that, you know take that advice if you want to uh i definitely don't know everything but i just know a little bit of preventive maintenance right here will cause that line from getting hot but i don't know why the air conditioner works perfectly fine this thing so let me get busy put some paste on this thing right here and then call it a day for this side over here
All right, hey, look, thanks for watching. I'm gonna go ahead and close this video out right now. Uh, got everything buttoned up right now. Uh, get ready to crank it up. Um, I'm gonna let a couple of heat cycles go through right here and then I'll, I'll re-torque these. I didn't really torque them, but I'll tighten those up a little bit more. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crank it up without these on it right here. I've never actually cranked it up without them because I've got the electric cutout QTBs which dump right here. But I've never seen what it sounds like right now, but I've got everything kind of cleaned up and ready to go. These are all my little polished stainless steel bolts, gaskets and those caps. But just for you folks out there on YouTube land, I'll crank this sucker up one time and see what it sounds like with the caps open. Here we go. Hey, make sure you get yourself one of these right here. Kind of important so you don't die in your own garage, but I got the doors open up right now. I got the fan going on. This thing right here obviously causes a little bit of carbon monoxide. So let me do my test reset right now. All right, hey, so check this out. I'm putting the caps back on right now. Uh, this thing is actually rock solid actually looks absolutely gorgeous so check that out so hey look uh and one little commentary here i just was on youtube i've seen a couple of people uh there's a guy in california put a v12 in it but you know i build my hot rods and my cars so they're functional that doesn't mean you can't build a car that's a show car or trailer queen you know go right ahead but if i'm going to spend the time money and effort to build a car you know, I said earlier, I'm a wussy, so I got air conditioning in here. You know, this coupe has air conditioning. It has power steering, power brakes. Uh, it's clean on the inside. I got it dynamated all over the place, so it's nice and quiet. Uh, there's my air conditioning compressor right there. So it's, it's just, it's got to be a comfortable ride for me because if the wife doesn't want to drive in it, then, you know, what's the point? Well, there's an argument for that too, but I won't get into that right now. But, you know, I got a little bit of trunk space buck in here. So I can put a camping chair back here. I can, I've actually had a cooler up in here. I can put a sleeping bag up here. I can overnight it if I have to. It's gotta be functional. Does that still work? Yeah, it sure does. So, and again, I'm not criticizing anybody who builds a rat rod and, and goes to shows like in Daytona Beach or you know the Hillbilly Rathathon in North Carolina, whatever you wanna call it. But just me personally, this is just me personally. I build my hot rod so you can actually drive. This thing is, what the Germans call Langstreckentauglich, that means you can drive it long distances, you know, with the exception of the fact that it's awful small in here. I've got this thing pretty well lined out with all the comfort creatures in here. Again, I got Bluetooth, I got hands-free air conditioning, not only air conditioning, but it's actually uh, climate controlled air conditioning. Gas tank is right here. That's for burnout water, so I can put water in. I got two reservoirs here and left that actually throws water on the back tires and there's the outlet right there and then right up there uh, on the other side of the rear view mirror i've got a line lock and yeah i do have a dash cam on here that is actually my rear view mirror camera right here so anyway let me uh, let me close this video up i'll do one more crank up after this with the exhaust system completely closed up so you can go down the road have a conversation you can drive 400 miles 300 miles 100 miles wherever you want to but that's basically it so from roger's hot rod garage Thanks for watching. Again, like, subscribe, and share, and appreciate you guys growing my channel. So, so check this out. This is what it sounds like with the exhaust cap on this end right here, but the exhaust open underneath with the QTVs, and I'll show you in a second what it sounds like when it's completely closed.
so obviously a lot quieter. Take care. Thanks for watching.